Now welcome to a life-changing encounter with the Word of God, preached by Rev. Oko Doku. Taught and trained to be a chemical engineer, Rev. Oko has from 1998 dedicated himself to pastoring the Young People's Churches of the Lighthouse Chapel International, which is now known as SAVED. He is based in the Kodesh, Accra, Ghana, the headquarters where SAVED gathers virtually hundreds of young people from all walks of life to enjoy easy to understand, easy to relate with preaching that is relevant. Rev. Oko travels the world holding programs for young people who experience the fresh breath of God's Spirit. His safe camps have churned out scores of young people with a fire for God and His work. Be blessed as you listen to God's Word as preached by His servant, Rev. Oko Bote Doku. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're happy to be at this camp, put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Well, it's my pleasure to be here. I'm so grateful to God for your lives. I am surprised that you came. I'm surprised that you came. I think that this year, we have had one of the highest levels of enthusiasm. and part. Now listen, uh, please take out your notebooks and your pens. Question one. I'm lying, I'm lying, I'm joking. Um, I want to say a very big thank you to all the pastors, general overseers, and uh, who released you to be here. I want you to understand that we are here because we have a very good church. And we are here because we have a very good bishop. In the person of Bishop Dag, you I want us to stand to our feet and put our hands and shout, I tell you. Hallelujah. We are blessed. We are blessed to have somebody who really cares for us. Cares for young people. Yes, I was talking to a parent who, who goes to a church and her child comes to our church. And she was saying that in the church, she's told her pastor, ah, but he's not minding her. So when her children said they were coming to Lighthouse, she said, you can go. <laughs> it's a blessing and I want us to be very grateful to God for his life because had it not been for him we wouldn't be here amen you may be seated hallelujah well I'm also very glad to inform you that um, this actually is the sixth Y church camp I'm holding this year yeah the first camp I held this year was in Tamale in uh, February, March, that not so. And then uh, I have held a white church camp also in South Africa. Then I held a white church camp also in Kenya. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, and then I held a white church camp in the United States of America. You know, it's spray, spray, scatter, rain, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And then from there, I held a camp in Switzerland. And uh, this is the sixth white church. I think that as a church, we are blessed. Amen. And I want to, I want to, those of you who are clapping, is it that you don't speak English or you don't believe that we are blessed? Can I get an interpreter? I, I want you to know, and, and for all these camps, I have preached different messages. Yes, this is my sixth camp in the year. And I'm yet again to, going to preach something different and new. I am saying this so that you will know the amount of word and resource that is available to you. Because by the grace of God, anytime I preach, by the kind courtesy of these very fine gentlemen, please put your hands together for them. <laughs> Everything... I say is documented. It was recently that I understood that <clears throat> it's a certain level of ministry and it's a certain level of the anointing that leads to a documentation of the word or material. And I want to say that as saved and as young people in this church, there's so much, so much, so much, so much and as I go along in this camp, one of the things that I, I hope that you will be encouraged to do is to 
Listen to God's word through preaching more. Amen. Amen. How many of you were at the at last year's camp? Can I see by hand? Uh, okay, please. If your hand, keep your hand up. If your hand is not up, could you please stand up? Your hand up or body up? If your hand is not up, body up. All right. Body up, people. Sit down. Body down. How many of you can testify that after the camp, you were blessed and your life changed? For those of you who came, only four people. Okay, no problem. But I believe that one of the things that as a, as a church is an explanation for what we have at the camps that we are holding. Amen. And um, this, this camp, I was asking God what to talk about and God told me to, get, to preach about the concluding part of a certain camp series that I have been preaching through this year. Amen. And um, in, in, in February, I started this in February. In February, I preached in Tamale. I preached in Tamale. I spoke about when Jesus works in a young person. When Jesus, not Kufo. Yeah, because there's a difference. When Jesus works in a young person, what happens? Amen. Amen. Because, you see, the name Christian is Christ Ian. Christ, to start with, and Ian. Like Ghana Ian. In the end. In the end. Jame Khan. I'm saying by Brian. Nigerian. Nigerian. Ivorian. Liberian. Chinese. Sian. One of the most annoying things in life is when you know that somebody doesn't belong to a group and he's forcing to join. Recently, I discovered a lady. She had been lying to me. She said she went to a certain secondary school in Ghana. Oh, so I believe that cry. And every time when I see, so, oh, then I'll be calling her secondary school's name. Oh, then one day I met somebody in the same school. I said, oh, do you know these guys? No. Oh. So she was in your school. So me, my school. What year? And I called her. Yes. No. I said, ah. But she said she was in your school. So one day, me and the girl and the, this person, we met at the same place. And I said, hey. Hey. You are the one who said you went to this. I said, oh, I, I can't explain. I can't explain. You see, it's not that I was, I used to visit my friends in the school. Second Christian. And so we must understand that our identity is Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Our identity is Christ. Amen. And so I start let's turn our Bibles the camp has started. Yeah. During this does everybody have a Bible? Yeah. Everybody lift up your Bible. Put your hands down. The thing is, when you are in my eye, I can't see it well. How about notebook? Lift up your notebooks. Notebook in the right, Bible in the left. Everybody, two hands. Please, if your armpit is... It's a zoom lion. It's, it's a zoom... It's, if your armpit is zoom lion... You are exempted. <laughs> Zoom lion. Yes, yes. Put it, put it down. Hallelujah. Turn your Bibles with me to Matthew 11. Hallelujah. And I'm, during this camp, I'm preaching the concluding part. During this camp, one of the things that we're going to do a lot is prayer. Amen. I thought you would clap. We're going to do a lot of prayer. Amen. Are you guys spiritual? 
Or you came to look for girls. Any boy who came here to look for girls, make your, may your left testicle become like mango. Not the right one, the left one. It should become like a ball of kinky. F foolish boy. Yeah, because I used to be in a certain church. I used to be in a certain church. And when we go for camp meetings, the main reason for the camp meeting was guests, permutations. And so I know you people. If you came here, especially those who sit at the back, at Chimota branch. Those of, uh, where's Gloria? Gloria, are you at the back? Uh -huh. Those people. If you came here to look for girls and boys, the ladies, should I tell you what will happen to you? <laughs> I will say it. I shouldn't say it. I will say the ladies. Those of you who came to look for boys. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll spare you for now. Because usually the ladies, they are very spiritual. They come to look for God. Yes, yes. Ladies come to look for God. Is the, boy, the boys are usually bad boys. Yes. Matthew 11. Have you found Matthew? Matthew is the first book in the New Testament. And it's not a trick. <laughs> Matthew 11. Yeah. It's okay, it's okay. Are you there? I'm reading from verse 1. The Bible says that it came to pass. And please, join this camp. The main thing we are doing here is preaching. Listening to preaching. Those of you who came with football, video games, <laughs> yes, swimming trunks, <laughs> bicycles, <laughs> Lutu, Tam. <coughs> Close your eyes. Close your eyes, everybody. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much once again for this opportunity to preach your word. Lord, I commit myself to you. Holy Spirit, I invite you into this place to come and take control. Holy Spirit, I pray for these young ones, O oh Lord. It is the spirit that quickeneth, O oh Father. The flesh profiteth nothing. Father, it is my prayer that the words that will be spoken during this camp will be spirit. And there will be life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, Matthew 11, 1. It says, And it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Amen. Amen. Verse 2. Now when John, and this John is John the Baptist, had heard in the prison the works of Christ, everybody underline the works of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Work in me, Jesus. Work in me, Jesus. Do something in me. That, that is actually what we are. That is why we are here. Amen. Amen. We are here because of our imperfections. And we are here because we want Jesus to work in us. How many of you here are imperfect? I'm the only one. How many of us are sinners? Let me see. How many of us have sinful thoughts? Let me see. How many of you, you do things and when you finish doing it, you don't understand why? Uh -huh. You are the reason why I came. Amen. Amen. It is because of you that I am preaching. It is because of you, Jesus Christ. Recently, I did. I was shocked. Hey, I tell you, some somebody in my area was misbehaving, and I caught him and I dressed him down. 
Yes. With my time, I dre- when I finished dress doing the dress down, I said, "Hey, in fact, Pastor Spar, I became so sad." So the next morning, I brought an Ochiami, and I, I went. To, I said, "Let's go and beg this person." Uh, it's recent, not long ago, recently. After the dress down, so. <laughs> We must understand that we are not perfect and Jesus wants to do a work in you. I may be preaching to a group, but I'm also preaching to you as an individual. Take the message for yourself and you will be blessed. Amen. Now, when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples, verse 3, and said unto them, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Verse 4. Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. In other words, John already knows about the works. But go and talk to him again to remind John about the works that I am working in the people. Go and show him. Or the, to, to prove that I am actually the Christ. Verse 5, he said, the blind receive their sight. Kobe, don't sleep. Eh? Try and be here, okay? Eh? You see, I know that you are not listening when your eyes are somewhere else. Eh? You are not sleeping, but you are, you, are, you are sleeping spiritual sleep. Yes, yes. It's not physical. It's, it's spiritual <laughs> sleeping. Now, I mean, I see how I say it. I'll say it. The blind received their sight. In fact, that was my first camp in Tamale. For three days. I was preaching about the blind received their sight. I can't preach it again. It's been preached already. And it has been put on MP3 CD collection. I know my Gary. You see, these people, they were there. That's why. I explained to them that (coughs) we have eyes but we can't see. Yeah. You know the Bible says in Psalm 118 verse 18 that ouvre mes yeux. Ouvre. Ouvre mes yeux. Which means, listen. It means, uh, it's not, someone, one, uh, say 18 or 119. Who put 118? I said 118. I meant 119. But you should have used wisdom to see that it's not 118. Uh, have you seen that I'm correct? Yes. But you, it's not every scripture that you should put here, eh? Yeah. Uh, from time when you see on the computer that it's wrong, don't put it up. Yeah. It's, it's a way of ministry. Yeah. It says, Open thou mine eyes. Listen, this is somebody who was writing. Somebody who was writing implies he could see what he was writing. But the same person who was writing said, open my eyes that I might behold wondrous things out of thy law. You see, the reason why you people read the Bible and you don't enjoy it is because you read it with your blind eyes. Yeah. Young people. You are reading, but your eyes are blind. 
your eyes are not open to behold wondrous things out of the law. That is why Jesus has come to heal your blindness. Some of you, eh, when the Lord begins to work on your eyesight, when you take the Bible, you, you, you won't want to put it down. I, young people, I don't... The Bible, eh, when I talk about it, I get excited. This is not a book, oh. It's not a book, oh. It is this book has worked on the earth before. Show me a book that has worked on the earth before. Or you don't understand. Those at the back, you are very dull spiritually. Those at the front, I think I should just preach to those in the front up to this side. As I'm talking, they are not protesting. Oh, but your mundum backlight, you know, my Backlight. This Bible, this book, has worked before. The Bible says, by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word. In other words, this book made you. Yeah. yeah. And if this book made you, then you cannot use the same eyes you used to read a daily graphic to read this one. No, 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 no. It's a different kind of book. This one is, hmm, even, even the comparison in my spirit is grieving me. To compare this book with Akiola series. It's a grievance. And it is a sore displeasure. This book, it became flesh. Show me a book that has become flesh before. And dwelt amongst men. That is why a lot of you don't enjoy your Bible. Because you use the eyes that you used to read Mills and Boone to read the, and you see and to perceive how many of you know that there are gems in the air? Put your hands down. How many of you can see the gems? How do you know? By faith. There is a machine that when you add that machine to your eye you will see. There is a certain working of the spirit. When you add it to your eye. So when Jesus works in a young person, the first thing that he does is to ouvre mes yeux. Open. He said the blind I talked about many things. I mean, something that I preached for three days, you must understand that. It was, I preached about, open my eyes that I may see the harvest. The extent of the harvest. He said, you say 40 days and then I, he said, lift up your eyes and see. There is seeing and there is seeing. Why is that you, when you walk in town, you never feel the urgency of unbelievers around you. It is because that particular eye of yours is blind. But when Jesus begins to work in you, Jesus begins to work. Your blindness is healed. May your blindness be healed by the CD. It will help. Oh, I've, I have, can you, if even these three minutes has blessed you, now can you imagine three days? I've just, I've just, I just scraped the top. I talked about open my eyes that I may see the spiritual realm. 
and then my open my eyes that I may see my spiritual state. How oh, even as I'm talking about it now, <laughs> he said, "You say you are rich, and you have need of nothing." And you don't know that you are wretched and you are blind. Some of us, we think we are okay. Because you come to church and come and dance in the front, you think you go to heaven. Hey, Abraham, in fact, telescope in two, life or so now. But when Jesus, when Jesus begins to work in you as a young person, the first thing that will happen to you, Matthew 11, verse 5, is that the blind... Do what? Receive their sight. Then the second one is, and the lame walk. That one I preached it in South Africa. The lame walk. And I preached about walking in the word. That's what the Bible says. It says, and now as you walk in my statutes, these blessings shall come upon you. (laughs) <laughs> then I spoke about walking in love because a lot of us what we know is falling in love what you know is falling but the bible said walk not walk in fornication walk in love Ah, that's why people have been falling these days so, Matthias, I'm falling down. Three days, get the CD. Soak it. Three enemies of love. Stop it, stop it, stop it. You people next year, you will not be here. I'll be this they are all mummies and puppies now. Then the third one is the lepers are cleansed. That one I preached it in Kenya. Yeah. Why are you jealous of me that I've been preaching in different countries? You to give yourself to the ministry. You also preach. And I preach about different types of leprosy. Is that not so? The leprosy of ingratitude. <laughs> and so on and so forth. And I have I preached the deaf here? I preached the deaf here. I preached the deaf here in Kenya. Uh, yeah. But in this camp, I, God has asked, I believe the Holy Spirit wants me to wrap it up. And so during this camp, I'll be talking about the dead are raised up. <laughs> and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Hallelujah. Once again, let me start off by saying that oh, somebody's following me. I can hear kukru, 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 kukru. I thought you sent your grandma that to follow me. Once again, let me say this, that when Jesus speaks about these things, you can talk up, you can Perceive them from the normal everyday point of view. Because how many of you, when you read this verse, that is what occurred to you. The blind see, you see a blind man, you can see. The lame walk, somebody couldn't walk. The the deaf hear, somebody couldn't hear. The lepers. But then when I began to explain, you realize that there is a deeper meaning to this than hair. Very good. We can look at it from the point of view of a dead person who Jesus Christ has raised up. But you must also understand that when God speaks about death, once again, he is speaking about many more things than you lying in the coffin. Pastor, but I'm not dead yet. Why are you scaring us? Already this place is and then you have brought us to this dark forest and now you are speaking horror preaching. Me, I'll go home. Me, I'll go home. You go home. You. I feel that I'm going to horror. Come to give you. 
Chewa part four and five for Chia. Next time you come for camp. Maybe Cham Horror Gaza Gaza. I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm teasing. Let us look at the first death situation in the Bible in Genesis. Hallelujah. The dead are raised up. Amen. Amen. Genesis 1. No, not Genesis 1. Genesis 3. Oh, I, I pray. Father, I pray once again that even if I am to preach for 15 minutes in this whole camp, may these young people live here with a tangible deposit of your word. Yeah. Father, I can already feel a loosening of the atmosphere. And I pray thanking you, oh God, that I, I will not have to do much. Because your spirit has already begun working in our lives. From the churches, oh God, that we have come from. From the words that we have heard over and over. Father, we know that the dead things in our lives are beginning to rise up. I feel it, Jesus. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Genesis 3. Hallelujah. And the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord had made. And he said unto the one, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it. Lest ye die. Underline that. Lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. You are dead. But you don't know. And the serpent said, Ye shall not surely die five. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took up the fruit thereof and did eat. <laughs> and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Verse 7, and the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard a voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day and said, Adam, Adam, prepare. Two hours from now, you are dying. I've prepared your coffin. One is blue, one is pink. Blue for the boy, pink for the girls. And they heard a voice of the Lord and they walked in the garden, the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord, God, amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked and hid myself. And he said, Who told you that I was naked? Has thou eaten of the tree where I have commanded it? Yes. <laughs> and the man said, The woman, mm, the woman, Mm. Thou gavest me. And the Lord said unto the woman, What is it that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent. And the, and the Lord said, Serpent. Then who said, Oh, it wasn't me, it was Gabriel. No, no, no. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above all every beast of the field. Upon the belly thou shalt go and and um, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children and thy, thy, thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Please underline that one. Seventeen. And unto Adam he said, "Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat, cursed the ground." For thy sake in sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall thou bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the fields. In the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and dust shall thou return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. Amen. One of the questions I really enjoy asking young people when I read this story is, did Adam and Eve die? Oh, speak the truth and shame the devil. Did they die? Oh, they didn't die. Where's the coffin? Where was the funeral? Who played the organ at the funeral? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Immediately, this should tell you, young people, that what God considers death is not what we see as death. Because what we know as death is that when the person is lying down, the coffin cannot move, cannot eat, cannot cry, is dead like this. There was some shawl or white, the wedding gown with pawns. They put pawns on your face. They put graphic in your coat. Then you become put. That's what we know to be death. And so when we think about Jesus raising the dead, what we are thinking about is somebody who has gone to who has died. Recently, one of our sisters passed away. Very recently, in fact, very recently. And then one of the brothers said that when he heard the news, he rushed to the mortuary. And he said, No way, it cannot be. Bring that body to me quickly. Then we got Protaka Broshandarabashaya. In the name of Jesus, come. I say, come now. I say, come. The girl was there. She said, I'll never come. Later, the brother told me that he had gone to try to raise this sister from the dead. I said, brother, why? Why? You don't like peace. <laughs> why? No, 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 no. I, I am not saying that God hasn't raised the dead. Definitely, we see miracles in the Bible where Jesus raised. But I'm, I, I, when you begin to understand who Jesus is and what he does, you will understand that when we speak about raising the dead, there's a bit more we can learn from that than just somebody in the mortuary. A lot of us have dead parts to our lives. Amen. 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 And God is going to begin to raise those dead parts. The first type of death that I want to talk about is the death of sin. Young people, I can be here for a, a while. Sin in a young person. Why do I say sin is death? Ephesians 2, verse 1. I've started a camp already. If I finish early, I'll go back home. But I'm being blessed already. How many of you know that you need to be relieved of a certain level of sinfulness in your life? Young people, God came here to cure us. Amen. Amen. When Jesus works in a young person, one of the things that he does is that with time you realize the elimination of your sinfulness. Let me read the Bible so that 
we will be on track. I'm still learning how to preach. Amen. Ephesians 1. <laughs> Ephesians 2, sorry. Verse 1. And you had a quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Anybody who still finds himself in a certain level of sinfulness and trespasses is in a certain level of death. That's why the Bible says, and you had he quickened who were dead in your sins. And that actually is the death that Adam and Eve experienced. They were not put in coffins. But immediately after that day, they introduced death into the world. But I came here to tell you that as you allow Jesus to work on you, trust me young people, I'm not talking about things that I am imagining. I'm talking about things that I have experienced. Sin, you will smile at some of those sins and say, oh, you. The days when you couldn't look at a girl's breath. I remember the other day, I, 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 excuse me to use this example here. Eh? Eh, but let me, I'll, I'll, I'll. there was a young girl. Eh? You know, these days, some of the things you wear, you should think about it twice or Sometimes it says, Oh, my auntie bought it from America. And so what? America, so what? My auntie brought it from Italy. So what? So don't wear it. You don't have. Anyway, so she was wearing this blouse. It's like a um, uh, sieve. It's like woolen, woolen. They have knitting. It's woolen. Wool, black. Black woolen from America. <laughs> and then she had but we are all we are all human beings here. So I can speak English. Can I speak English? Yes. And she was wearing a strapless bra. You know strapless bra, the bra that that, that uh, they hold it at the back. And they hold it. Uh, but uh, yes. But uh, that's why can I speak English? As I'm talking, some of you your penis has already started to become this thing. Try and allow it to be cool down. I shouldn't say it. I will say it. I will say it. I will say it. So, this lady, I don't know whether uh, the, uh, the bra was uh, her, for a big mother or a sister, or, but it was big for her. Yes, yes. And then, uh, <laughs> oh, why are you people, I shouldn't preach. <laughs> so, Araba, as she was talking, I don't know, the, the, the bra started coming down. I was very, I was, and she was, she was wearing sieve, net, woolen, from America. See, so Bucky, at a point, her, 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 her bra, Brazil had come to the lower levels, below sea level. Yes. And, and her, 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 her bobbies, her, her, yes, her breast, her fofolos. Was as it was, oh, it was that clear everything, nipples, everything clear. If I ask a preacher, I can still remember. The, 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 this. Yes, <laughs> but oh, let, oh, why? But Danny, do you know what I noticed? I noticed that had it been in those days, I, I said, "Oh no!" Wash! Ha! It's nice, oh. Far nice, so nice, nice, nice. But no, but rather trust me. Rather when I saw, when I saw it, 
I began to feel sad. Oh, why are you laughing? Yeah, I began to feel sad that, oh, yes, that the, the rest are all. And you see, I was also doing counseling, so I couldn't, I mean, I didn't know how to, if it was some of, if it was some of my church members, I was, oh, please, your bra has exceeded the limits. So I, uh, yes, it's, it, has, it has crossed the barrier. Yes, yes. Yes, it's a message. It's a message. But I couldn't tell her. So I finished everything. And I realized that. But I was just thinking about myself. That wow. I've really changed. Yeah. Clap for me. I've changed. A day will come, you can hug a lady that there will be no, you won't get hard on. You know hard on. The ladies do now, you can see a man's chest and you will not, you will brrrr in your chest. Or you will see money and you won't feel like stealing it. Or you, or you will see, or you will see somebody's clothes and you will not covet it. Or a time will come that you will be surprised that you will not dishonor your parents anymore. You'll be surprised that a time will come that you, you will not live in trespasses and sin. And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Next verse. Where in, in time past ye walk according to the course of this world. A time, some time ago, you used to walk according to the course of this world. But God is quickening you. I'm sure you people don't believe. I'm sure you people don't believe that that habit, that sin, that sinful nature, that has grappled you and is killing you, a day will come that it will no longer be there. He said, who in you will say in time past. You would not like my preaching. I'm, I am preaching this for somebody else. I'm really enjoying it. I said you will look at that sin and you will describe that sin as in time past. In some, some time ago. Was I bound to this? But no longer. According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that worketh in the children of obedience. Verse 3. Among whom also we all had all. All. I was talking to a sister. I was talking to a sister recently. And I was telling the sister, flow with this other sister. And I was saying, flow with her. And then she was saying that, and I told her that the reason why you are not flowing with this other sister is that you feel that she's some way. When you, you, you know her past. But I said that, know that we have all been there. There's nobody here who, 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 who was born reciting Psalm 23. But it's just that we cannot say. And it's that nobody saw us. But if God is to bring our video, video DVD MP4 and say I'm going to how many of you like God to show your MP4 here? Your nice life. We were all there. Phoebe, me, Reverend Oko, I was there. Who am I? I am a sinner saved by grace. Young people, don't be deceived. Never let people in their sanctimonious state and extreme piosity make you feel 
that they are holy and have always been and you are the sinner who has just arrived in town among whom also no 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 stay I'm still there among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the last of our flesh fulfilling the desire of the flesh how do you know that you had last in your flesh Fulfilling the desire. How many of you remember you, you were fulfilling the desires of your flesh? Listen, fulfilling the desire of your flesh is not only sex. Oh. No. No. Quarreling is fulfilling. In fact, when I have I have a list here. I hope I find it. I'm coming. Let me find it. Forty-five different types of sins. Number one, killing, killing, killing. Number two, stealing. Number three, abusing, abuse or insulting. Number four, disobedience. Number five, violence. Number six, fighting. Fighting. How many of you have fought before? Me when I was growing up. People didn't like fighting with me. When we start quarreling, okay, then I come out and I do this one and say, it's okay. I won't fight again. I say, oh. These people, they must give me some experience. Because the only person I used to fight with was with my sister. And she, she was easy to beat, my twin sister. But she too, she had her scratching and her biting. I will never forget the day that um, I, I betted with my twin sister. She's a lady pastor now, lady pastor Aquili. And we said, knock, knock. You, have you ever done that betting before? <laughs> Knock, knock. <laughs> it's called what? Zanzama. <laughs> so we bet. I said, knock, knock. So, oh, knock, 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 knock. Okay, then we held our fingers like this, and then my big brother cut it. One. And then, when the, I can't remember what we were betting about. I think we were betting, somebody was a horn. Somebody blew the horn. Beep, 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 and we said, oh, it's my auntie. She said, no, it's not my auntie. I said, it's not. And she said, it is. And I said, oh, it's not. okay. It's knock, knock. I said, oh, no problem. So I heard. And then she said, Zah. When they opened the gate, hey, it was my auntie. So my, my sister said, come and let me knock. I said, oh, by you, we are just joking. She said, oh, no. I'm a man of my word. And I said, I'll knock you. I'll knock you. I said, oh, I'm a man. Come on. Then she called my big brother. Said, you, you saw that? I said, oh, what are you doing? Then my big brother said, listen, if you better bring your head coolly and, and, you, and then just put your head there. I said, oh, what are you people doing? So my big brother, who is stronger than all of us, held my head. Oh. Then he was like, she, he positioned my head at an angle theater. I tell you, so my girl, you won't believe it. I began to cry. And listen, I'm even crying right now. I wasn't crying because of the intensity. I couldn't believe. Fighting, fornication, lying, and abortion. Number 10, suicide. <laughs> Number 11, covetousness. Number 12, idol worship. Recently, I told somebody that your mobile phone is your idol. Yeah, I mean, he told, he told me, he said, I cannot imagine life without my mobile phone. 
and I said, and I said, I cannot, I've never heard you say, I cannot imagine my life without Jesus. I said, I think I may be wrong, but I think that your mobile phone is more important to you than Jesus is. I don't, because a lot of us, we may not go to Tigari or what it's called to go and worship idols, but we have American idols. So. 13, rebellion. 14, anxiety. 15, raping. 16, sodomizing. S- Sodom. No, listen, you people, it's a very serious issue. I don't know why you are laughing. 17, masturbation. 18, stealing. Stealing. Yeah, I'm coming, I haven't finished. Ah, why? Stealing tight, tight. Your tight. 19, sorcery or witchcraft. 20, drunkenness. 21, jealousy. 22, bestiality. People who sleep with chickens and goats. And... Why are you laughing? I have a friend, he slept with the chicken, then the chicken died. <laughs> I mean, I don't. <laughs> I just saw you at meals. Why? <laughs> Why yours didn't die? Eh? <laughs> Twenty-three injustice. Twenty-four adultery. Twenty-five insolence. These are all sins. How many of you have found yourself in one or two, one or two? How many of you three or four? Hey. Five or six? What number are we on? Dishonesty. 27. Treachery. 28. Hatred. Hatred. <laughs> Hatred is not a hoya. <laughs> Make sure you pass your exams in school. <laughs> 29, <laughs> wickedness. 30, gossip. 31, disrespect. 30, corruption. 33, bribery. This is a, this is a list I compound myself. It's no. 34, last. How many of you have lasted after somebody before? Lisa. Ah, the ladies are shy to lift up their hands. How many of you have lasted after somebody before? May you rise out of your last. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. 35, greed. 36, mockery. 37, pride. Pride. Are you writing? You are, you are not writing. 30, 38, arm robbery. 39, Impatience. 40. Disloyalty. 41. Unbelief. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> 42. Deception. 43. Unforgiveness. 44. Uh, I can't read my own handwriting. <laughs> ah. Thirty-four. When I sit, I'll tell you. Thirty-five. Selfishness. Hey, Forty-five. Selfishness. There are so many sins, and these sins represent death in our lives. Amen. But when Jesus begins to work in a young person, Hallelujah, you begin to notice that the sin in your life goes away or you haven't noticed it amen Amen. when you come to Jesus Christ you have no 
you have no excuse to continue sinning. The reason why you don't have an excuse to continue sinning is because God has quickened you. God is is working on you to take you out of your state of sinfulness. Young people, we cannot tolerate sin in the youth church. No. Any sin that you see in the church represents death to God. For you, you say, oh, it's just a lie. For God is saying, death is coming into your life. Yeah. For you, you say that, oh, my mother, my mommy, eat the ball. Charlie, make you no mind them. For you, it's just not minding your mother. But for God, it represents death in your life. Yeah. You feel that, oh, smooth operator, when you come to church, Reverend Oko doesn't know, after church, before you go home, you pass through a guest house, have one or two of the girls, eat them, and then go home. Which type of eating? Now, what you have been doing? You who were dead. So, let me just go a bit clubbing. Let me have a drink. Let me just this. I'm in the church. I'm in the church, but I still want to continue with my sinful life. It is, for God, it's death. For you, it is just a little sin. For God, he sees it as you are dead. Recently, let me tell you a story. How many of you want to hear my story? How many of you want to hear my story? Recently, I was talking to a young lady. And, uh, who said A? Ajua, is there a problem with talking to young ladies? Uh, I was talking to a young lady, my church member. And she said, oh, I'm sad. I said, why are you sad? She said, oh, my dog had puppies today. Oh, I haven't finished. Uh, why are you people so impatient? My dog, impatience is a sin. My dog, my dog had puppies and they all died. So I'm so, she's a very pechepe girl, you know, that about. So we're talking about her puppies who are dead about her. Oh, my dog, my dog. I said, eh. And then immediately God gave me a revelation. I said, oh, wow. I know what you did with your dead puppies. I said, you love the puppies. I love them very much. Do you love the puppies? Oh, they were so cute. And I really love them. And, uh, <laughs> I said, okay, I know what you did with your puppies. I said, you wrapped your puppies and you put them beside your your, your pillow on your bed and you slept. They, oh no! I said no. You you took. Uh, don't you love them? She said no. I love my puppies very much. In fact, I uh, I named one uh, instinct. Uh, no, uh, Professor Mills and the other one Nana Akufuado. No, I, I'm joking. That one, that is not true. That one is, is just. I said, you put a ribbon round their head, and you put them beside you in your bed, and you slept by them. You you saw two small pillows, and then you put. Said no, never. I said, what did you do? She said, I had to painfully take my puppies who were dead, and I threw them in a box. And I had to put them outside and zoom lion. <laughs> zoom lion. Said so, so she wasn't sure whether she said, ah. So, I said, so, so, she so, so, I, I think either zoom lion came for them or they added them to their death in the house and burnt it. I said, your dogs that you love. She said, yes. And I said, that is exactly why when we live in sin, you are one of the foolish, I'm sorry, one of the foolish, I'm sorry again, one of the foolish things that unbelievers say is that if God loves us so much, how can he put us in hell? And then I told her that that is why God, somebody listen to me because this is very powerful, that is why God puts us in hell. Because as much as he loves us, once we are dead, 
He cannot bring us into his house. And that is how God sees you when you continue in sin. As a young person, you found Jesus Christ. He's washed you with his blood. When you came, you said, I surrender, I surrender all. I surrender, I surrender all. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, I surrender, I surrender. Dear Lord, dear Lord, I give my heart, I give my heart to you today, to you today. Come into my heart, come into my heart. My heart is yours, my heart is yours. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me, Lord. Uh, from all my sin, from all my sin. Satan, 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 Satan. From today, from today, I'm no longer, I'm no longer, I'm for Jesus, I'm for Jesus. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen. Follow the ashes, then you follow the ashes. You've given your heart to Jesus. Jesus has come into your life. He has come with power to quicken you from your sin and your past. And you still want to be like my friends, two little dead dogs. There is a point at which Jesus will say, young person, thank you very much for dancing in the front of the church. I'm sorry. I love you very much. I like your dance, especially the way you be bending your shoulders, the way you do it. I like it very much. But because, because you are dead in your trespasses and your sins, I cannot allow you into my clean kingdom. In fact, my father won't allow Even if I want to bring my father won't allow me. How many of you, you wanted to bring something to your house, but you know your father will not allow you. You wanted to bring something to that, but you know my father. So I want to, you know, you see, I, I want to have this movie. I want us to watch, but I know that if my father comes home, so you know something. You, the Lord be with you. You may. I am saying this because I realize that for a lot of young people, the issue of sin for them is a small issue. Yeah, you take sin too lightly. You take sin, young people, too lightly. And your attitude towards sin is a smelly attitude. And you realize that in your Christian life, you have no effort to who once were quickened. And please pop that one out for me again, because I've left my Bible. Ephesians 2 from verse 2. We were all once, once there. But now that you come to Jesus Christ, it's okay. Stop kissing the boys. It's okay. Stop. Stop it. You don't hear what I'm saying there. You'll be there. You'll hear pam, panam, panam, panana, pa, 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 pa. Just as you are going to do, you may kiss the bra. You are just to kiss that. Just as you are going to do, you pam, panam, pa, 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 pa. Pa, 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 pa. Pa, 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 pa. David is okay. The sin is okay. After this comes, stop. It's okay. Stop it. It's all right. Stop it. I came here to assure you that Jesus Christ has a way of resurrecting. Oh, I thank Jesus. I say he has a way of resurrecting you out. <laughs> yeah. He said, I am the resurrection and he that believeth in me. Though he were dead, I see a holy generation. They will look at lighthouse people, young people, and say that these people, you cannot tempt them to fornicate. Papa, ayaka, amen. Yes, I will bet that. Say amen. <laughs> Try and also say something. Because <laughs> already your face is woozy woozy. It's, I say, what? How are you? How are you? Your face is already woozy woozy. Uzi, uzi. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. The sin has stopped. The gossiping is over. The hatred is gone. That was in time past. Somebody say in time past. Everybody lift up your hand and point this way and say in time past. In time past. Oh, I'm so excited about the word I'm preaching here. I said, I'm so excited about the word that I'm preaching here. Eh? Recently, I, 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 I heard about a, an, an old friend of mine who I was just following up on 
if one or two things. Uh, and I heard that he was still in certain sins that me in time past I was involved. And I said, Oh God, I have received your mercy. I said, I could easily have graduated. Yes, but now I have PhD. When I finish my uh, first degree, I say it's okay. Shanghai, Bilala. In time past. Somebody say, in time past. In time past. Pastor Ben, I don't think they understand the message. Please, do you understand what I'm saying? Conrad, it's okay. The sin has gone. You don't need to carry pornography on your phone. I shouldn't say it. I will say it. I shouldn't say it. I will say it. You don't need to. Think about it. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Think about it. A woman in Malaysia. She's in Malaysia. You are in uh, Accra. And she is in Malaysia on the internet. And she has opened her legs. And they have put camera in the middle. And then you are in Kolegono. In the internet cafe. (laughs) Is it not foolishness? Is it not foolishness? The girl is in, she's in Copenhagen. 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 And you are Sukura. She is in Copenhagen. And you are Sukura. In an internet cafe at 1 a.m. And then she has removed her bobbies. And then in Copenhagen. And you are just, hey. oh. Oh. Ha. But I said that was in time past. Somebody say in time past. Somebody give the Lord a shout. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know that it was only recently, eh? It was only recently that it occurred to me that iPod can be used to, to capture pornography. It never occurred to me. Because for me, when I think about iPod, I think about preaching, my gospel music, Hill Song, Bishop Dark Heward Mills. That that if I'm if I am saving money to buy an iPod, that is that no sincerely, sincerely that is what I think of. I I mean, that is what I have become because of the workings of Jesus. Then one day. I was going through somebody's I wanted to get some. He had something that I wanted. As I was going through, I saw Sister Act 2. No, no, no. It's not a bad movie. It's a movie that I enjoy very much myself. Then I said, uh, iPod. I now download the Sister Act. That means you can also download other movies. It never, it never occurred to me. I, I can I can comfortably give you my phone. I said, I can comfortably. Everybody, take out your mobile phone and lift it up. Uh, Everybody. If you don't lift it up, when you go back home, somebody will steal it the day you arrive. Lift it up. The way you have used your five fingers even to hold it, to show that you cannot. Can you comfortably give your phone? Oh, but. And then there's a picture. There are no pictures on it. <laughs> this one is called Akame Last. <laughs> uh, it's, it's magnetic phone. Magnetic. <laughs> it, it captures numbers. <laughs> H, HTML. Numbers. Numbers. Comfortably. Comfortably give me your phone. Why can't you? When they say no, we say, why not? I can do it here. I can do it here. I can do it anywhere. Express yourself. 
during this camp, God is going to revive, resurrect, resuscitate, quicken, empower. I know it. He will do it. He did it for me. He will do it for you. Jesus will work a work in your life. How many of you have been blessed by the camp already? The dead are raised. Joshua, the dead are raised. Oh, you say amen. Ah, try and say amen. Some of you, then, then not the, the numbers on your phone. You cannot easily dial all of them. Some of you cannot comfortably give me your handbag. Recently, recently, Lady Pastor Erica was going through a young lady in church. Oh, a young lady's bag in church. Do you know what she found? Three invites to different disco events, club, this holiday. A Christian who I have taught you Christianity ever since she was a little girl. Aphrodisiac, one. Then what? Hypnotic, another different. And then the last one was a boomerang. Three, or not even one. If it was one, I say you were tempted and you fell. But three... You are a cheap Christian. You don't want, you don't want me to say it. Amen. I will say it. I say you are you have cheapened the blood. You have cheapened the blood and you don't deserve heaven. Yeah. You deserve hell. Now I'm waking up. You you've made the blood of Jesus of none effect. You've made the blood of Jesus cheap. You you, you, it's, it's almost like you were passing by when Jesus was on the cross. Oh, Jesus. Ah, Jesus. <laughs> oh, dear, you, are you, ah, I don't know for you. Eh, you said what you are doing. You are shedding blood for my sins. Shall I go and look for some kebab and chew me? How Jesus raises us from the death of sin. Death of sin. One. How many of you want to to rise out of the death of sin. Only four people. The rest of you should go. So I preach to people who want to hear what I'm saying. Verse 1 again. And you hath he quickeneth. Everybody say quickeneth. Quickeneth. Jesus Christ has quickened us. When I saw this word, it reminded me of two scriptures. And these two scriptures talk about the same thing. It reminded me of John 6, 63 and Hebrews 4, 12. Let me quote John 6, 63. He said, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. Then it goes on to say, the words, the words that I speak. Hebrews 4, 12 says, the word of God is quick <laughs> and powerful. One, one method, one method, one method, or one remedy of rising out of the death of sin is the word of God. One. What somebody who is constantly in the word, his life is different from that light person who has no knowledge. All the person knows in the name of Jesus. Yes, more young come in. Yes, more young come in. Me chichiru, me chichiru, me chichiru. Me fa ben tua. Me di yes, more young. Me di acid, Ephra. How about some? Kotoa. Me di sao. Fiu, fiu. Saruka toilet. <laughs> Somebody would have thought that to overcome the death of sin, you need 40 days of fasting. No. Deliverance. No. So, oh, pastor, me, my problem is lying. Please, cast it out for me. I should cast it out. I won't cast have your quiet time. Listen. Listen. 
Psalm 119, verse 11. This, what I'm preaching now, is one of the things I love preaching. Psalm 119, let me start with verse 9, then I'll read verse 11. You people, you must believe the word of God, oh. Recently, I went to the doctor. The doctor said, we found one or two. I said, eh, he said, yes. He said, please, this is the medicine that will cure the one or two. I said, okay. Then when I went home, I took the medicine, put it in the toilet. Who am I? I'm a fool. The person said one or two, does he have a mental problem? I was also wondering, yeah, because the one or two doesn't fit. I think that, please, you are from which branch? From where, La? From where? Tema. Please, can you observe him medically? Listen, why I'm saying what I'm saying is that as I'm preaching, you may think that, as I'm preaching, you may think that, as I'm preaching, you may think that, my friend, don't listen to my preaching with your eyes closed. Okay? <laughs> eyes, eyes closed is for prayer. <laughs> yes, yes. Listen. I've been talking for more than one hour and I'm not tired at all. But I feel as if I've just started. <laughs> wow. Now listen. Yeah, I think you're recovering quickly. <laughs> yes. A lot of times when we are told the truth, we don't believe because the truth is so, it's so simple. It's so simple that we think that no, 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 Reverend, what you're saying is true. It's not true. But please, if you will not believe me for any reason, believe me because it has worked in my life. The only explanation I can give to you for not doing the things I, am, I used to do in it is not deliverance. I'm even shy. I'm even shy to go and tell somebody some of the problems I have for him to pray for me. Because you don't know. As you have come to tell Reverend Oko about some, one or two problems. One or two. <laughs> <laughs> You, you don't know when next you go and hear it. So I'm giving you a medicine that you can take home and drink it for yourself. How shall a young man clean his way by taking heed according to thy word? If you want to live a clean life, somebody should give me a more modern version. Well, if I had my use my comparative Bible. I don't have my laptop here. Message says what? Huh? You haven't opened it. How can a young person stay pure? Stay pure. By what? By obeying the word. Give me, give me the Bible. Stay pure. I love it. I love it. A young man. You are making me shout. How can a young man keep his way pure? How can a young man live so that his mobile phone he can comfortably give it to anybody? My mess. That you can take my iPod. That you can come into my room, look through my library and not get a shock. That you can look through my album and you will not see a picture that I've done this. Or a picture that you've done this. Or a picture that you've done this. How can a young man overcome the death of sin? Oh, yeah, the death of sin. Lust, fornication, lying, disobedience to parents, rebellion, disloyalty, treachery. What are the 45 sins I gave you? Hatred, lying, greed, lust. Listen, abortion. Somebody says suicide. Personally, personally, I don't know what to make me kill myself. <laughs> How I am enjoying life in Christ. How I am enjoying life in Christ. I don't know what to make me kill myself. I've told everybody who knows, knows me. If God wants to kill me tomorrow, he's free. Take me. I prefer to be. Don't, just don't cry. We came for the camera. 
A big blow has fallen on life. No big blow has fallen on anybody. God has caught me. <laughs> but for me to kill myself, when I know that I'm the apple of God's eye, when I know that my life is hid in Christ, in God, when I know that the fullness of the God head body dwells in me, and I am complete in him, my confidence and my assurance is not based on my family tree. It is based on on the word of God, which is common to all of us. If it was riches, you said, oh, she will be happier than me. Because her father is richer than my father. But fortunately, to, uh, one or two. But fortunately, <laughs> fortunately, <laughs> one or two. But for, <laughs> can I have some silence, please? Fortunately, our victory over sin doesn't come from how much money our father has. It comes from obeying the same word which is available to all of us. Oh, I'm so blessed. God is a just God. If you are struggling with sin, it is not because you have a special case. It's because you have not swallowed the medicine that God has given freely to all of us. Flush it down the toilet. Psalm 107 verse 20. You will live a sinless life. When you see, when you grow in Christianity, the sins change. Fornication is not my major at all. At all. Last fornication, masturbation. Those are not my problems. I also have at my level a different kind of sinyazo. When you marry, then now the marriage is testing your patience. <laughs> Psalm 120. Psalm 107 verse 20. It says what? Four reasons why the word of God. Nanam, are you tired? Oh, it's good. It's good to be tired. But I'm not tired. Four reasons why the word of God heals you from the death of sin. Four, Four reasons why. Four reasons why the word of God, when you swallow it, it heals. God should give me grace. God should give me grace. Something is opposing me in the realm of the spirit. I come against you in Jesus' name. Psalm 19. I am so blessed. I feel power in what I am preaching. I feel a generation of holy people. Let me tell you something. He said he sent forth his word and healed them and delivered them. As I am preaching, somebody is being delivered from sin. Yeah. As I am preaching, a certain habit that you had is going away. I cannot lie to you. I know when I feel the power of God. I know when I feel the power of God. When I can't feel it, I know I can. But I tell you that I feel the, the presence of God as I'm preaching. Four reasons. Psalm 19, verse 7. The first reason the Bible says in Psalm 19 verse 7 that the law of the Lord is perfect. Yeah. If you want to clear imperfection, you replace imperfection with perfection. I'll say it again. When you want to eradicate imperfection, you eradicate imperfection with perfection. And because the law of God is perfect, the more of the law of God you put in yourself, the more perfection you invite into your system. Yeah. That is why the word of God can cure you, can deliver you from the death of sin. It is perfect. It is perfect. And people are so jealous. They saw the word of God. There are mistakes in it. There are mistakes where? Show me. The Bible is a perfect book. In fact, when we're coming, Pastor Ben and I were discussing, he said, God knows us so well, it is so, in fact, when you are a student of the word of God, sometimes you are surprised at the things that God thought of before the time. I remember recently, I had a wolf in sheepskin enter my church. Hey, it bit my sheep. It was eating them rough, rough. Then one day I read the Bible and not knowing that 2,000 years ago, Jesus had already seen that this kind of situation was coming. He's prepared 
every situation and every sin you are going through. Recently, I preached a message. I was shocked. I was shocked at how often I had to refer to that message within a period of about one week. It was Father's Day. I preached in the second. When I even preached the first time, I said, oh, God, what, what, is, what kind of message are you leading me to preach? And I want to, enc- I want to encourage you people to be listeners of messages. I preached, I preached, God, our Father. God, our Father. And I preached and I explained to the church that, you know, a lot of times in our lives, the excuse we give for not being able to do well or perform at a certain level is because my father wasn't there. So he had, so I grew up in our house, no father, and that is why this, and we had to do this. And, and then Jesus asked me a question. He said, do you know that I also grew up in the house? If you study the Bible, the last time they mentioned the name of Luke, is in, so Joseph was in Luke chapter 2. Then later they referred to him as the carpenter's son. But you don't see, when, when Jesus was baptized, Joseph was in there. When Jesus did his first miracle, how many of you would like your father to be there when you are doing your first miracle? Joshua, you wouldn't like your father to be there when you are doing your first miracle. I have news for you. Je- Joseph was in there. When Jesus raised the first dead, he wasn't there. When Jesus was on the cross, his father was not there. And yet, this man was tempted in every way without sin. And I preached this word. And I was surprised. Within a week, this person comes with the situation and said, listen, your, your situation is not, it's not peculiar. Jesus, and I told them that because of that, one of the things that Jesus did was that he developed his relationship with his heavenly father. Because his father was in there. The relationship he concentrated on developing was the one with his heavenly father. And you know what he used to do? He would wake up early and go into a far, a, a solitary place and he, would play, and he would pray. But when he prays, nobody knew what he was praying about. If it were you in the early in the morning, quiet. I tie you. I tie your left leg. I tie your right leg. The Bible says in Mark one thirty five that a, 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 a long while before they go to a solitary place. The Bible says and his disciples looked for him and they said, all men seek thee. They said, let's go to another town because there are other people there. But one day in Luke 11 verse 1, the disciples said, Jesus, we see you praying all the time. What what is it about prayer? And he said, they said, teach us how to pray. Just like John taught his disciples to pray. Then he said, when you pray, say, I bind you, Satan. I receive the blessing from heaven. When you pray, say, our Father. In other words, his prayer time was the time he used to develop the relationship he had with his father. I tell you. You guys, you. you. (laughs) The law is perfect. The more of the law, the more of the word of God, you people don't know the word. You don't, all you know is you prosper, you receive it, you, uh, we are going for, we are going forward. What verse is that? Through Jesus Christ, we are moving for. Show me the verse. Show me. Go, 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 go high. Where is it? Go, 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 go high. Show me where it is. Since I came here, I've been quoting scripture after scripture. It's not magic. It's not magic, young people. I said it's not magic. These things, do you know for how long I have known them? I have known these verses for more than 20 years. Long ago, I got to know this. This one, it was my sister who taught me. One at the point in my, the one who gave me the knock. The same one. The same. She's actually my only sister. There are five boys and one girl. And she's my twin sister, so she's my sister. The others are borrowing her. The law of the Lord is perfect. The second reason 
why the Bible or the word of God will deliver you from the death of sin is because the testimony of the Lord is sure. It's sure. When God says something about something, is sure. We have had this Bible for 2,000 years. They haven't changed one thing. Physics, they will write a notebook. They will revise it because they are not sure. That is why when you read the word of God, Ima, you can be sure that you won't fall into the sin anymore. It's true. Because the word is sure. Say, Pastor, I've been struggling with this sin. They poured oil on me. They don't pour oil again. Can you imagine somebody wants to fornicate? When he comes, you have opened Second Thessalonians 5 and you are reading. As he knocked on your door. So, oh, come, let's do Bible study. Let's read. As you are reading. As you are reading the scripture, his erection will go down. You don't know erection. It's necessary for certain. It's an English word. So the second reason is that the testimony of the Lord is sure. The more of the word of God you put into your system, the more sure you will become in life. So that you see men of God, they have a certain level of confidence. It, it, it's because of the presence of the word. I told God, I said, if my wife dies, you killed her. Uh, because <laughs> your word says it's sure. Third reason why the, the, the word of God will deliver you from the death of sin is that verse 8, the statutes of the Lord are right. Not wrong. They are right. If you want to know the right thing to do, read the statutes. They are right. Not wrong. I said they are right. You people, if you, you see, that's why you shouldn't be eating. That's why tomorrow we'll fast. I can, I can, I can feel, I can feel a spirit of kenke and sardine in this place. Everybody stand up. Stand up. Danny, I'm not tired at all. Everybody lift up your two hands. Down. Up. Down. Up. Down. Sit down. Sit down. And why are you disobedient? Get up. It's a sin. It's death. Sit down. Stand up. Do. Okay, sit down. I'm so blessed. The last reason why the word of God will deliver you from the sin of death is because the commandment of the Lord is is what? Is what? Is what? Please, if you all don't say it, I won't leave you. Is what? Ah, so you were there. Is what? It's pure. If you want to be healthy, what do you do? You eat healthy food. If you want to die, you do what? You eat unhealthy food. <laughs> if you want shistosomiasis, you drink shistosomiasis water. It's, it's simple. If you want ringworm, uh, not ringworm, tinea saginata. That's, um, is it hook, earth, hookworm? Not earthworm. Earthworm is the one that is in the pig. Eh? Not roundworm. Tapeworm. Thank you. It's very long. Tapeworm. That one, when it comes out of your bum bum, when you, 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 you pull it, you feel you have pulled it out, it will leave the head inside. Then to grow again. So, come and see me for the medicine for that one. So, if you want to be pure, drink the pure word of God. Four ways in which the word of God, four ways in which the word of God delivers you from the sin of death, or the death of sin, sorry, death of sin. The camp, we've just started. <laughs> I have the notes. More points. Plenty. Four reasons. Four ways. 21 signs. I've not finished at all. Ajua, you are tired. It's your first camp. You'll get used to it. You are surprised. You thought that by now we'll be sleeping. And you people, when I release you, you chat to 4 a.m. It's true. That's why I'd rather preach to 4 a.m. It's true. Lisa, is it not true? I'm an experienced, 
I have been doing this work for 10 years. So subtract 10 from your age. It will tell you when I started doing this. Who's that? Hey, oh, Charles was a baby. When we are going for camp, they'll come and stand there with us. Bye bye. For, for what? Ways. Give me the verse 7 again. Psalm 19, verse 7. I'll do it quickly. I'll do it quickly. I'll do it. We'll be closing soon. That's, listen. Listen, I'm about... No, no, listen, listen, listen. You see, what I'm preaching is so dear to my heart. You guys, eh, stop thinking about your tiredness. And think rather about the blessing that you are receiving through the word. I beg you. Don't do... Jennifer, Jenny, Jenny, wake up, wake up, wake up. Don't think about the tiredness at all. Think rather about the blessing that you are receiving in the world. And think, how many of you have watched a movie before? You didn't want to miss any action. So we are like this. You took Mark's stick and put it in your eye. You said, no, I can't. Eh, please, Joshua Clotte, who won the fight yesterday? He won. Did you watch it? Eh. Anyway, that's so beside the point. So in the same way, I'm telling you, sweet action is coming. Don't miss what I'm preaching, please. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Now listen to me. This is how the word of God delivers you from the death of sin. When you read the word of God, the Bible says the law converts your soul. Now when you speak about the soul, the soul is the seat of your thoughts, your feelings, and your emotions. Oh, I'm loving this. I am, I am loving this. One of the things I have realized is that the more of the word of God I read, the law of the Lord I read, it actually is changing my thought pattern, my emotions, and my feelings. It converts it. That is why I can hold a woman in my, and not feel a nguin nguin spirit in myself. Be, no, 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 no. I'm not joking. Because as I have constantly and continually exposed myself to the law of the Lord, it has changed the way I think about women. It has changed the way I feel when I see them. And it has changed my emotions towards them. Now I don't lust after them. I love them with the love of God. Me. I I remember I went for a camp in the UK. After the camp, one of the things about me is that I'm not a very good person. What I mean by that, I'm not very gifted or talented or whatever. I mean, there are people who are experts. I mean, the things that I do, the reason why maybe sometimes it looks, because I, it's, I, I do things with my heart. And I discovered in the Bible that the greatest commandment is not casting out demons. Uh, yeah, I discovered in the Bible that the greatest commandment is love. And so, you know, I told myself, Pastor Ben, I told myself that, Pastor Ben, if the greatest commandment is love and I cannot do all these things, I will spend and invest in developing the love side of me. So, anybody who comes around me for a while, I mean, I'm, not, I'm saying this, I, I, I believe humbly, will feel love. I, I beg you. I beg you. I, I'm human and therefore I'm imperfect. But if you come around me, I remember I did a camp in the UK two years ago. And when I finished, the children didn't want to go home. And they were, they were pulling me on the grass and all. And at a point, they said, Reverend Oku, kiss me. No, you see, because your souls are not converted. No, 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 no. I held, I remember I held, holding one of the young girls. I kissed her on the, on the forehead. And she said, Reverend Okwa, I really feel loved. I remember, I, I, when I went to South Africa this year, I remember after they were, I was playing with the children on the grass. One of them said, I don't want you to go. I said, I have to go. Then one of them came to me and did this. So I turned my cheek. I said, so I gave him, small boy, my lips and I kissed him. Why can I kiss a small boy and, and still not feel evil? Because the law of the Lord has converted. 
it, it, has, it has converted my soul. It's changed it. Do you know what it means to convert something? To convert means it was in one way and then a process has made it something else. The law of the Lord will convert your soul. The law of the law of the Lord, sorry, will make you to begin to understand the role of fathers in your life. So that when you see them, your immediate emotion will not be hatred and alienation and isolation, but rather it will be a desire like Elisha and Elijah to be with him. He said the only thing that can separate us is God. Only thing. It, it comes from exposing yourself to the word and that exposure now conver- like, like you know I was telling, uh, I was telling um, the teachers today in our teacher service that some time ago when I see somebody in a flashy car my emotions begin to react towards this wow I wish I had one I did almost sometimes leaning on and then I now have prayer useless prayer topics I say oh God oh no father if only you give me Mercedes Benz oh God the riches belong to you but you see but the, 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 the motivation of my prayer was it, was, it was a fleshly desire to have possessions. You know, I was thinking about it. I gave them this example because it just happened. I said, you know, Reverend Eastwood, he, 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 he's, a, he's a, a gentleman and he can dress. When it is green, it's green. When it is pink tie, pink tie, pink pochette, Pink, pink face towel and pink braces. He can combine black shirt and cream suit and then cream and black crocodile shoes. Yeah. Some time ago, as I see him changing clothes from day to day, I'll say, wow, when will the day come? When I'll be able to also change? Yes. This man must have a lot of suits. As I looked at him this year, I was seeing the, uh, the anointing, the power in his word. I was so blessed that these other things, they, they meant, I, I will not even say meant almost nothing. They meant nothing. But it has come about because I have, ex- you know, Later on, I will show you three ways in which the word of God comes to you. Because a lot of you do not know that the word, when we talk about the word of God, we are not only talking about the Bible. Yeah. Reverend Oko, what are you saying? So what? Are you saying the Quran? And then, no, 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 no. When I, when I explain you, you understand. Three ways. As I've exposed myself to the word, Ruthie, my emotions, my feelings, and my thoughts have been converted. Bucky baby. That's my firstborn daughter. And my first son. And then my firstborn daughter. And my first son. And my firstborn. But as I'm saying, I know it's not true, but yeah. You are a woman, and your immediate reaction to another woman is jealousy and hatred. Yeah. Yeah, that is your soul. And that sin in God's eyes, not look, how can you be sleepy at such a powerful? Get it. Yeah, take it one. If you can, if you're a woman, I'll slap you too. Was it painful? But it has converted your soul. Yeah. <laughs>